Let's start with a question. How do you define success? Getting money, power, education, influence, these are all seen as metrics of success. It is hard to box it in a single definition. But no matter what kind of success you're chasing, the path is more or less the same. It features relentless hustle, showing up every time and delivering your best. That's what success stories are made of. And we are bombarded by such stories all the time. Sometimes your parents are asking you to be like them. Sometimes social media is offering Sunday inspiration. And they all say the same thing. Success demands sacrifice. No pain, no gain. You have to push the envelope. You have to hustle, show up and sacrifice. It is inspiring, but also a bit intimidating. Because what happens when you cannot show up? What happens when you're tired of the daily grind? What happens when you're burnt out? Does it make you a failure? Does it diminish your chances in life? Can you admit to and address burnout and still have a shot at success? Hello and welcome to Between the Lines. I'm Palki Sharma. And on this show, we try to read between the lines, the stated and the unstated, the obvious and the hidden, to bring you the full story. Have you heard of the expression, burning the candle at both ends? I know it sounds odd, almost counterproductive. But what it means is this, doing too many things at once, from early morning to late at night. In other words, stretching yourself with no time to rest. A lot of us do it in the pursuit of success. And a lot of us end up burnt out. Burnout is described as a state of emotional, physical and mental exhaustion. It is not a myth or an excuse. It is a fact of life. The World Health Organization recognized it in 2019. They called it an occupational phenomenon, so not a medical condition. But does that make it less serious? Is burnout just a modern day affliction? Did our ancestors suffer it too? To answer this, let's go back in history. Not very long ago, just 50 years or so. This is a story from 1973. It features a man called Herbert J. Freudenberger. He was a therapist. He treated people with drug addiction. And he used to work at a clinic. He often did double shifts. He was exhausted. And this is how he described it. You feel a total sense of commitment until you finally find yourself, as I did, in a state of exhaustion. That's Freudenberger describing his job. Let me quote from another diary entry. Having experienced this feeling, state of burnout myself, I began to ask myself a number of questions about it. Do you notice the term he uses, burnout? Freudenberger may be talking about himself here, but the term he uses was derived from the patients he treated. In the 1970s, burnout was a term that drug users had coined. They used it to describe their own addictions. Freudenberger made it public and soon it became popular. Everyone was talking about it. From army veterans to retail employees, it became so famous that influential singer Neil Young even wrote a song about it. It's better to burn out than fade away. That's what the lyrics said. But is it really better to burn out? Let's take a look at some numbers, and they are alarming to say the least. 10,000 desk workers were polled in six countries. 42% of them said they were burnt out. In America, 52% of the workers are burnt out. It hurts their health. It also has financial implications, something to the tune of $1 trillion every year. That's what the World Health Organization says. $1 trillion is lost in productivity every year due to burnout. In some cases, it's also deadly. Workplace stress impacts mortality rates. In the US, 120,000 people die due to stress at workplaces every year. In India, the story is no different. 54% of Indians say they're burnt out. That's more than half the workforce. 65% considered changing jobs in 2023 because of burnout. Among them, retail employees are the worst hit. Then come people employed in the government and the defense sector. 59% of them said they're burnt out. And the pandemic has made it worse, which should not be surprising, really. It was a very difficult time. People are dying around you. You're sanitizing every hour of the day. You're worried about your loved ones, and yet you're expected to deliver the same output at work. It took a toll on people. 
Even though they were working from home and saving time on commute, it was a challenging period and it took a toll on everyone. And it showed in the burnout levels. The fallout is evident even today and it's not like we're doing more work now. The thing is, burnout is not just about the work you do. It's also about the atmosphere you work in. You may not be exhausted, but you may have difficulty focusing. It manifests in many ways, pessimism, depression, anxiety. And then there are some physical signs too, like chronic fatigue and lowered immunity. If you're always tired and constantly falling ill, chances are you're burnt out. Now, if it's so prevalent and so damaging, why don't we address it? Because our culture does not encourage that. We don't really understand burnout. So we feel guilty about taking a break. It doesn't have to be like that. And while job burnout is very real, it's not the only kind. You can get burnt out from years of stress, from years of trauma, from simply living the wrong life, from choosing the wrong career or being in the wrong relationship. Any and all of this can burn you out. And our society does not always understand that. It expects you to work every day, show the same productivity and the same dedication. It can be too much pressure sometimes. And it should be acknowledged and addressed because burning out is a warning sign. It's your body and mind's way of telling you to pause. You've pushed yourself too far. You've neglected your well-being in the pursuit of success or whatever it is that you're after. That's when burnout sneaks up on you. It drains your energy. It dampens your spirit. And worst of all, it leaves you feeling empty despite your constant activity. Our digital world makes it deadlier. The boundaries between work and life are disappearing. And it's something that is expected of us. We check our work emails at dinner. We send texts from the bedroom. We answer calls during family outings. Our devices demand constant attention and our culture demands constant productivity. The result is burnout. So how do you combat it? Like I said, the WHO calls it an occupational phenomenon and not a medical condition. So there is no medical cure yet. But here's what you can do. Start with accepting what's happening. Define boundaries at work and in life. Learn to say no. It can be tough, but it's worth trying. Say no to the endless demands of work, of society, and of your ambition. Prioritize self-care, and do not get me wrong here, it is good to be ambitious, but you have to set your own threshold. You have to determine the price you're prepared to pay. You have to find your balance, the elusive holy grail of our times, the art of knowing when to push hard and when to step back, when to hustle and when to rest. Like I said, it's about setting boundaries because burnout is not a rite of passage. It's not a trend that should be celebrated. It's a wake-up call. And no, it does not mark the end of the road. You still have a shot at success. In war, they call it strategic withdrawal or retreat. When you take a step back, gather your strength and resources and strike harder. Remember, prioritizing your well-being is the winning strategy.